Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. In geometry, it's important to know how to measure an angle. To do that, you use a protractor. The key thing about using a protractor is using this alignment. Now, every protractor is a little bit different, but they're all going to have something at the middle of the base. And that's where you want to put your vertex of your angle. And vertex is spelled with an E and not an A. So that is where the vertex is going to go. And then along one of these two bases, so either the distance between the center and the edge over here, or the center and the edge over here, that is where one of the sides of your angle is going to go. So you're going to have one of your sides and the vertex all lined up. And then you're going to have some sort of ray that's going to extend all the way so that you can get a measure. Now one key thing that students kind of forget is let's say you're measuring an angle that only goes there. Say, Mr. McCall, um, I'm going to guess, but I'm not really quite sure what the angle measure is. What you need to do then is to grab your straight edge, so I'm going to grab mine, and you're just going to extend that ray and extend it all the way until you can actually give yourself a very accurate reading of the degree measure. Now the last key thing that you need to take in mind is obtuse, acute, or right. Before you even measure an angle, kind of eyeball it and make a guess. And if you look at this angle right here, it's pretty clear that this is going to be obtuse. It's more than 90 degrees. So when you're going to use these measures, there's always going to be two numbers. One's going to be larger than 90, one's going to be smaller than 90. So when I use my protractor to measure this, because I know this is obtuse, I'm going to take the larger number. So I'm going to grab my protractor, and again, mine's going to look a little different. It's, to be, it's designed for use on whiteboards. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place whatever this little center is along right at the vertex. I'm going to make sure that one of these bases right here is along this bottom side. And then I'm going to say, well, where does this other ray cross the edge of my protractor? And I see that that distance, if here's 90, so we're going up, so we have 120 right here, and I have 135 right here. So the question is, is this 137 or is it 132? Well, if I look, my numbers are increasing as I go further and further away from 90 degrees. So I'm going to be two back from 135 or it's going to be 133 degrees. Okay, and that confirms my original suspicion that this was an obtuse angle. Let's try measuring another one. So if I measure this angle right here, I'm going to guess that's, that it's right, but I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to put the center of my protractor on the vertex, and I'm going to make sure that one of my bases is aligned. And it looks like we have something that's a little bit over 90 degrees, which means that's going to be obtuse. And when I measure it, I see that we're going to have about 91.5 degrees. Now you're really only going to be able to be accurate to the tenth place. If you come up with a number saying, oh, Mr. McCall, I got this angle is 91.508 degrees, I'm going to say you don't have enough information on your protractor to go that far out on your decimal place. So I'd say if, if it's in between, you can make an estimate on your tenth place, but otherwise you can just round this and say that this is about 92 degrees. So this last one is very clearly acute. It's going to be less than 90 degrees. So when I look at my protractor, I know I'm going to be using the smaller number. So again, you put the center right on your vertex, and then you align one of these bases at one of the sides of your angle. And it's pretty clear that we have a little less than 60 degrees, according to what I can see. And we're going to say that this angle right here is going to be 58 degrees. So the key to using your protractor, remember there's about three. First is align whatever center hole that you have of your protractor on the vertex. Second key thing is align one of these edges along the side of your, of your angle. And the last key thing is make a guess about the size of the angle and they'll tell you which number to use. 
if you were shown this problem on a quiz and you said, no, Mr. McCall, that is 57 degrees, I'm going to say that's wrong because although the, the marking might have been correct, you didn't recognize this as obtuse and this should have been 133 degrees. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, to fix. Yeah. <laughs>